All right, let's do a demonstration on how you make a plate. The first thing we need to start off with is our film negatives. We have these folders that uh, include the negatives. So let's take a look. We'll turn on the light table here. And you want to inspect your negatives. So this particular job here is four color process. So we have a mask that's common to all four colors. Then we have the black negative, the yellow negative, the magenta negative, and the cyan negative. We're just going to be printing the black today, so we'll just make the black negative. So what you typically want to do here is lay the film negatives on the pins, Put the ruby mask on top of the negative and then inspect the negative for any scratches or defects that would print on the plate. If there were, uh, you would either use a black sharpie pen to opaque that out or use some red ruby tape to uh, opaque that out. These look pretty good to me. So let's come on over to the uh, plate area. Okay, the plates are stored in this uh, file cabinet here. Uh, plates for the 2800. We have a package here. Uh, these plates are one-sided. They're metal, aluminum. Uh, and they already are pre-punched for a pin bar system. And the plates are 11 and 1 quarter inch wide by 19 and 3 eighths inch long. And there's 100 plates in a package. This particular package here was received on 717. We opened it up on 10, 16, 17. So take a plate out and they are slip sheeted with a piece of uh, tissue paper to protect them from scratches. So let's just take one plate out. Now, the light sensitive emulsion coating on these plates is green in color, but it's sensitive to white light. So if you're gonna have these plates in prolonged exposure to light, you wanna at least turn them over to protect them or cover them up with something that's opaque. Okay, now that we have our plate, we bring it over to the plate punch and our plate punch is Stosser register systems. So it's a Stosser punch. And when this is pulled backwards, the punch is open and we want to center the plate left and right. I have a green line here, which would be 11 and a quarter inches. Now we can punch the plate. Now the small little holes, the pin bars are for mounting onto the plate cylinder. These three large holes, the center circle and the two outer ovals or slots are used for registering film in the vacuum frame. So now that we have our plate punched and our negatives, we can come over to our plate maker and it's made by Newark and it's called a flip top. And we have a handout here that talks about the plate making workflow steps. And we have another handout over here that talks about the actual Newark flip top plate maker. Okay, we would uh, turn the power on and we would have a power light indicator here. We would push, not in, but down, down. Now we can open up our plate maker. It has a flip top with a glass door frame. We wanna make sure that our pin bar bed is centered inside the rubber gasket here to have a good seal. We take our plate, put our plate down on the register pin. Now we get our film negative. You want to make sure that the orientation of the film negative is right reading. You do not want to be wrong reading. So it's called right reading RR. Put that on the pins. Then the ruby mask, the ruby lift mask goes on the pins. 
close the glass door frame, lock it in, turn on the vacuum pump. The vacuum should be over 20 pounds of pressure. This gives you very close contact between rubber blanket, plate, plate to negative, negative to mask, mask to glass. You want this to be very flat. Once you have your proper vacuum, we'll set our exposure time to 18, 1.8, add to zero, 18 seconds of exposure. Now we can close the vacuum, close the vacuum top, hit T for timer. And when I hit T for timer, the exposing light will come on and we'll start counting down. The exposing light came on, or now we're starting to count down. Now this will count down slower uh, because when the bulb is cold, it doesn't expose as quickly. But as the bulb gets warmer, it'll count down very quickly. Okay, this is gonna require two exposures. Uh, the negative plus a center bleeding register marks. So we can get those now. And on almost every job we expose, we're gonna use these center register marks. Again, it has a set of film negatives here, but it has a goldenrod paper mask. And these center marks are all based on this master template for eight and a half by 11. A center mark on the vertical and a center mark on the horizontal. Okay, we're almost done with this first exposure. The exposure light will go off. We can open up the flip top and you can actually see that the bulb is very hot, it's glowing. We have an exhaust fan here that's cooling that bulb down and we have an integrator, a light integrator here that's actually measuring the amount of light. Now if I try to open up this door with the vacuum on, I can't do it. But when I turn the vacuum off, of course, you break the seal and now you can open up the door. What you'll notice here is that the unexposed emulsion was green, but after you expose the plate, you see that the emulsion color turns a purple, violet, blue color. Okay, now you're ready for your second exposure or burn. You put your bleeding center marks on the pins. You put your goldenrod mask over the pins. Close the vacuum frame door, turn on the vacuum. Your exposure is already preset to 18 units. When you have enough vacuum, we can flip the door closed. Hit the T button for timer, and the exposing light is on, and we're counting down to zero. While we're waiting for that exposure to finish, we can come over to the plate sink here and we can get our developer out. So in this plastic gallon jug, we have negative plate developer. We're also gonna need to get the gum Arabic out. This is clear gum Arabic. We'll put this over here. We'll need this in a few minutes here. We're gonna need a cotton pad to develop the plate. And we're gonna need a cotton pad to gum the plate. We'll prep for that. Okay, our second exposure or second burn is complete. We'll turn off the vacuum, open the door, take the negative and mask off, put it back into its folder. Now you would not normally turn the vacuum frame off right now because the bulb is still hot. We want that fan to cool that bulb. So we'll do that in a minute. We'll bring our plate over to our developing sink. You don't want to plate, place the plate this way vertically because it's too far to reach. You want to place the plate laterally, horizontally here so you can reach it. We do want to close the vacuum frame door and we do want to flip the top down. But as I mentioned before, we'll keep the fan on until that bulb cools. Now we take our developer and we pour about two to three ounces onto the plate. 
put the top back on, put the jug back on the bottom. All this developer that's flowing off the plate, we want to bring it back and cover the plate immediately. The purpose of getting all this developer on the plate is to soften up, loosen up the unexposed non-image area of the plate that has not been hardened uh, by exposure. What's happening now is that background is softening up, it's getting loose. Now you can take your cotton pad and either using these circular motions or using figure eight motions or just by rubbing back and forth, we're removing that background of the plate. This developer does have a strong odor to it. It does smell or stink. You don't need to wear gloves to do this. You may have some staining on your fingers from this developer, but we can wash our hands later for that. Okay, now my cotton pad is dirty on this side, so I'm just going to flip it over to the clean side and continue developing the plate. Okay, this looks pretty good for developing. Once again, the liquid developer is removing the non-image area background, the emulsion coating that was not exposed or hardened by the light. We'll throw the developer pad away. There's a valve over here to turn on the water spray from the 